from a stereotyped gay monopoly to removing Jews from Germany. Join us as we take a look at 12 offensive board games you've probably never played. With so much debate about US gun laws at the moment, this weird and offensive board game from 1985 is sure to rub some people the wrong way. Armed with a handgun and six bullets, you and up to three other players attempt to survive a ride on New York's subway network from Brooklyn to the Bronx. On your way, you'll face wave after wave of riffraff bent on harassing you. Ultimately, you'll face the decision on whether you should use your gun for self-defense or not. At the end of the game, the rules encourage an open discussion about vigilante violence and how you felt about the decisions you made to survive. Nothing says fun like arranging your own funeral. This bizarre board game, created in 1964, pits players against each other to see who can win the most money to throw lavish funeral parties while still alive. The losers are sent to a place called Slob Hill in an orange crate coffin. The aim of the game is to be the first player to accumulate $50,000 worth of funerals, hearses and tombstones. The only problem is I think dying might actually be more fun than playing this weird board game. Nothing like teaching kids about a cigarette company nice and early. Produced by RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company, this two to six player card game comes packaged in a big camel cigarette packet. While the game itself is wholesome enough, it's all just one big marketing campaign for camel cigarettes. The crux of the game is to roll six dice with the letters C-A-M-E-L on them. Players then try to match their cards with the letters that roll up on the dice. The weird thing is, the look and theme of the game seemed mid-century, but the game was actually produced in 1992. Smoke up, Johnny! On a scale of 1 to distasteful, this one is off the charts. Based on the 2007 Amanda Knox murder case in Perugia, Italy, players take the roles of various individuals that were present at the time of the incident. The aim of the game is to pursue variable hidden goals as you move about the house where the murder took place. Turns are taken in real time as a sand timer moves along 15 minute intervals represented by clocks at the bottom of the board. Dice are rolled each turn to move players around the apartment. It's up to you whether you recreate or alter the tragic events that took place on the 1st of November 2007. At first glance, this board game looks to deal with immigration issues, but in actual fact it's about smuggling drugs into the US from Mexico. Two to four players are tasked with getting into Mexico to score kilos. First they must find their sources, Eduardo, Ronaldo or Jose. Then it's a matter of smuggling the score back into the US where they must sell it. First player to sell enough product to hit a predetermined monetary figure wins. This weird board game has a strong agenda. Created in 1981 by Hammerhead Enterprises, this politically driven board game sees players roll the dice in a corrupt judicial system. The aim of the game is to get all four of your criminals in life imprisonment, death row or the electric chair. Alternatively, a player may use two of his liberals to manipulate the opposing players. These liberals can remove the opposing player's criminals out of the path of justice back onto the street. The objective here is to do it often enough that your opponent's innocent citizens become victims of violent crimes. The victims go to a section of the board called Heaven. I assume the criminals don't end up in this space. If for some reason you want to play this game, it's available on Amazon and there's a link in the description box below. Take the role of a band of fundamentalist Christians bent on killing all hippies. The aim of the game is to kill or convert hippies using various religious relics. Players choose the length of the game depending on how many bohemian alternative types there are to kill. So join your fanatical Christian brothers and sisters and rid the world of those pesky non-conforming flower children once and for all. Created in 1983, Game Monopoly is an unofficial version of the Parker Brothers well-known property trading game, although this version has a rather queer twist. Players choose from a range of tokens including a jeep, teddy bear, blow dryer, leather cap, handcuffs or a stiletto heel. Instead of owning properties, players build bars and bathhouses. The chance and community chess spaces are replaced with camp and family pride cards where players are encouraged to act out certain prompts, like say fabulous six different ways to earn money. Whilst this board game is intended to be tongue in cheek, the stereotypes and caricatures used in the game are sure to offend a few people. Game Monopoly was produced by Parker Sisters, a subsidiary of Fire Island Games. According to Board Game Geek, Parker Brothers sued Fire Island Games for copyright infringement, ceasing all production of the game. 
Copies of the board game are now limited, making it a valuable collector's item. While the basic premise of this game is somewhat admirable, the career options for girls in this 1960s board game were limited to airline hostess, actress, nurse, model and ballet dancer. The aim of the game is to move around the board collecting school cards, subject cards and personality cards. A player wins when they collect four school cards and two subject and personality cards that would suit that profession. Aim high girls, but not too high. This vintage board game, believed to be released around 1910, sees players stealing chickens and watermelons from farms as they attempt to avoid punishment. However, no one is certain on the origins of the game. Almost all copies sold on eBay and other sites have reported to be forged. Many have speculated that this offensive board game is actually a recent creation, conceived to titillate and evoke a response out of a gagging internet audience. It's managed to achieve its objective as this board game has become a hot item on auction sites around the internet. Released just prior to World War II in 1936 by Gunther & Co, this racially charged board game had players deporting Jewish people back to mandatory Palestine. Each phase of the game had players rolling the dice to move their Jews along the board towards collection points where they would be deported. This offensive board game has become known as history's most infamous board game, with a reported 1 million copies being sold in pre-World War II Germany. There is a copy on display at the Holocaust Museum in the Wiener Library in Russell Square, London. This board game is so offensive I can't even say the name of it and we've had to blur the title. Released in 1950, the aim of this game is to shoot these boys with a popgun rifle that fires corks. First player to get to an agreed points total wins. What in the blazes? Wee, well, so I've got a question for you lot. If you could invent a board game, what would it be? Let us know in the comments section below and the most interesting creative answers could feature in our next Q&A. And that's it for the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Pew!